If you enjoy what you hear here today, please consider supporting me on my Patreon page. Every dollar helps, and you get to see content that you won't see here. Chapter 31 Abandoned The Entrance of the Equestrian Hive Vladimir Broadsword and Shining Armor gently began to approach where they knew one of the entrances to the Equestrian Hive would be. They had been dropped off by a helicopter a short ways back, deciding to hoof it out from there so as to not attract any undue attention to themselves. On a normal day, a perception filter would be covering up their chosen entrance, and the only reason they should have been able to find it with ease at all was because they already knew exactly where it was. However, just like all the previous days leading up to that point, it was anything but normal. The entrance was completely visible to all outside eyes. There was no perception filter, there were no guards, and even the doorway at the end of the cavern opening was wide open. The three ponies stood at the entrance to said cavern, staring down into it, each of them on edge. Well, that's unnerving, Vladimir commented. Abandoned. That shouldn't be like that, should it? We can see it normally, for one thing, Broadsword pointed out. And there are no guards or anything. I don't like the look of this. We keep going, Shining Armor commanded. We need to see what's going on inside the hive. We should be even more careful in there than out here, Broadsword responded. Last thing we want is to get trapped underground. We will. Come on. The three armored equestrians continued with caution, creeping their way into the cavern and through those large doors. The hallways beyond were just as silent as the entrance, but the most distressing fact wasn't that. No, it wasn't the stillness of the hive, or the odd claustrophobic feeling they were all getting without the presence of the changelings. No, it was the fact that there were signs of a struggle, and they were everywhere. Discarded weapons and armor, gashes along the walls, magic burns. They even found a smear of dried blood that was in such a pattern that it suggested something, changeling or pony, had been dragged violently through the hallway. And the silence remained. By now, it was painfully obvious something big had happened in the absence of Queen Twilight Sparkle and they could make some good guesses as to what. But despite the blood and the damage, there was still something missing. Something they expected to see around every corner, but never came across. Shining, Vladimir called out. Where are all the bodies? Maybe they were removed, Broadsword suggested. Why bother? The attackers obviously didn't want to keep this place, Shining stated in response. You saw those drag marks, blood streaking across the floor. I think they were taken by force. To have done to them what was done to Queen Draco and her hive, Broadsword morbidly agreed. We should check the atrium next, then the throne room. Got it. They continued onwards. Vladimir taking point with Broadsword taking the rear. All of them drew their weapons before proceeding and readied themselves for anything. Their intakes and exhales of breath were steady and quiet, each step calculated to reduce the noise produced. Several agonizing minutes of deafening silence later, they came close to an entrance into the atrium. Just around the next corner... Vladimir stated back to his fellows in a hushed tone. The Thestral rounded one last corner and halted suddenly. The others walked up and stood alongside him, both staring at the same thing as Vladimir. Well, the captain of the Lunar Guard said, so much for no bodies. A dead changeling was crushed up against a broken door that had been blown off of its hinges, the doorway in question giving a view of the atrium beyond. 
looked as if the changeling had been thrown into the doors at incredibly high speeds. Likely a decently powerful spell, the door giving way to the impact and killing the changeling. A quick inspection also revealed the changeling to be of neither Twilight's Hive or Queen Draco's. One of the attackers, I'd say, Broadsword noted. They didn't take their own dead with them. They came to take the population of this hive, disabling at most and not killing. Shining Armor observed with a grim expression. I doubt those defending themselves had any such reservations, but it didn't help them. And whoever is behind this has no need of the dead. You know this changeling's fate was taken from him, Broadsword stated. None of his actions were his own in the end. I know. And now Twilight's Hive is... with her. Broadsword placed a hoof on Shining Armor's shoulder, the unicorn sagging slightly out of despair. They were distracted by a loud cough given off by Vladimir, who had entered the atrium and was beckoning them to follow. When they did so, Vladimir sadly gestured towards a prone earth pony mare laying by several unupturned tables. Vladimir sighed. They may have wanted the changelings alive, but they had no interest in the ponies. That's why none of the visitors returned, Broadsword noted. We have to assume they're all dead. Records indicated that there were a little over two dozen ponies visiting around the time everything went silent, Shining Armor said. On a piece of paper, that number seems small. But it's two dozen lives too many. Well, I can spot a few others, Vladimir responded, looking over a railing down into the rest of the atrium. One such pony carcass sat at the base of the seemingly intact statue of Queens Avia and Chrysalis, surrounded by a few more dead invaders. There seemed to be a few more bodies around the various floors, leading them to the conclusion that the atrium was where the fighting and resistance was the heaviest. Unsurprising, considering the atrium was essentially the beating heart of the hive. A now silent and very dead heart. There were thousands upon thousands of changelings here. This was the second largest hive, Broadsword noted. They can't have gotten them all. If they'd assimilated the largest hive and all the rest, Vladimir pointed out. But I do hope some got out. There's nothing here for us, Shining Armor declared. We'll check the throne room and then decide what to do from there. The other two nodded in confirmation, letting the prince take the lead with the two captains following shortly behind. That deep into the hive, they continued on only to hear silence. Signs of a struggle still present. It was all exactly the same as it had been since they first entered the giant subterranean structure. The only exception was a few more bodies and one pony the rest being changelings. One of those changelings was a guard from Twilight's Hive, having likely been inadvertently killed during a struggle with the invaders. When the group eventually reached the throne room and entered the large cavern, they were met with exactly what they expected to be met with. Nothing. Nothing at all. The room was empty but showing the same signs of fighting as the rest of the hive. Both the doors were already open on their arrival, giving them an immediate view of the entire throne room. The three ponies strode in, the captain studying the entire thing while the prince was transfixed with what remained of the throne itself. The once mighty seat of power was no more. A scorch mark from a powerful magic blast in its place, with the spell having completely destroyed the throne. Shining Armor stopped, looking down to find one piece of the rubble at his hooves. The very edge of a pink starburst could still be seen on it, a single smaller white star remaining just a little ways from the point. 
It was all that remained of the proud cutie mark that used to decorate the back of the throne. His sister's mark. Broadsword had also noticed the vandalism and walked up next to the unicorn. An act of blatant disrespect against Twilight. If she is under this control of sorts, then the one pulling the strings is clearly proud of it. Shining Armor gave the Pegasus a brief glare before turning back to the throne. Fire in his eyes. Whatever his thoughts were, he didn't share them, electing to remain silent in his rumination. Vladimir looked on just behind the two, seeing that Shining Armor needed his space for the moment. He turned away from the throne and began to walk back towards the doorway, exiting out into the hall beyond. He had only just taken that step out when he was suddenly and very violently tackled to the ground. What the- Hey! Broadsword shouted, having seen the strike from the corner of his eye, quickly rushing out to aid his friend, was shining quickly snapping out of his own inner thoughts and following behind. Uh. Vladimir groaned as he took in the two glowing orbs staring down at him. Two orbs containing what he swore appeared to be embarrassment. Facade! They're, they're friends. friends! Another male voice shouted, one that Vladimir recognized. It appeared Shining Armor and Broadsword did too, given that they screeched to a halt the moment they heard him. Cardus? Facade stepped off the Thestral, a little flustered. Yeah, yeah I, I can, can see that. that. The fur gave it away. Vladimir rubbed his head briefly before sitting up, finding an outstretched hole ridden hoof waiting for him. He accepted the help, and Facade helped the stricken Thestral to his hooves. It was now that Shining Armor and Broadsword fully walked out into the hall and joined their fellow pony, all three taking in the new arrivals. There was Facade, a changeling adorned in the red armor of Queen Draco's guard. Cardus was with him, as were Panacea and Uvenus. Uh, Cardus! Shining Armor greeted, really flooding his voice. Oh, you're all alright? Barely. Cardus responded before pointing at Facade. We have him to thank. You mean the guy who tackled me? Vladimir deadpanned. Sorry for that, Facade apologized. You popped out right in front of me. I thought you were one of them. You mean the attacking changelings? Shining asked. Yes, the Empress's attack dogs, Facade replied. Empress? You don't know yet? Uvenus inquired incredulously. They don't have a hive link, Uvenus. Panacea reminded her daughter. Neither do we now! Shining sighed. <sighs> Alright, can you please explain what's going on? Before contact was lost, Queen Twilight believed the Empress of the Changelings was behind all of this, Cardus explained. She was going to propose this to the Council when everything happened. Broadsword rubbed his chin. Huh. I wasn't aware the Changelings had an Empress. We didn't until recently, Cardus replied. At least not for a long time. Huh? It's an old legend, the Changeling continued. I better explain it to your princesses. They need to know what we're up against. Oh, hold on. You're certain this Empress is what's causing all of this? Do you trust your own sister's deduction skills? Well, yes. Then yes, I am. I hate to interrupt, but what now? Vladimir asked. Getting out of here would be a good start, Facade remarked. Yeah, and who are you again? Name's Facade, the Changeling formally introduced himself. I served in Queen Draco's guard, and I protected the embassy in Canterlot until the Queen severed us. Then I came here, was joined to Queen Twilight's hive, and then she disconnected me too. 
I also saved the free minds of this lot. Any more questions? Because, I mean, we really shouldn't stay here. Vladimir blinked. No, I think that answered my question well enough. We have an extraction ready when needed, Shining Armor stated. You're welcome to join us. That would be appreciated, Cardus said with a shrug. I mean, if there's room. Shining Armor nodded for the group to follow him, and they all fell into step behind. Cardus stayed close to his family in the middle of the group, while Broadsword and Vladimir guarded the rear, with Shining a facade taking point. They began to take the most direct route to the hive's exit, making no unnecessary detours. So, Facade spoke up to Shining as they walked. You're Queen Twilight's adoptive brother, right? Just brother will do, Shining Armor replied. But yes, I am. Well, then I can only imagine how all of this is for you. I'm sorry. Thanks, I guess. What exactly happened here, anyhow? Several of the Empress's thralls assaulted the Hive soon after the Queen cut us all off. Facade began to explain. The entire Hive was taken, and the ponies were killed. Queen Vulgaris led the assault, just as much of a thrall as the drones. What about you, Lot? Why are you still here? The Hive was in a frenzy. None of them were thinking straight with what happened. They could barely fight back, let alone do something like hide, Facade stated. But this is my second time disconnecting. I was able to stay a little more level-headed. I ran into Cardus and his family about to be assaulted by Volgaris' venomous little daughter, and I couldn't let them be taken. After Imperius and her escort were fought off, I helped the family hide and waited out. And what of any other changelings? We couldn't help any others. We tried. And we failed. We had to change our hiding spot afterwards. Facade said regretfully. I was the only one of us capable of any real fighting. And I'm just one changeling. I understand. You did what you could. I hope so. Facade muttered with a grimace. But anyway, we managed to hold out until they all left. We've been here for the past week, using whatever food and such that was left behind to survive. But we've been afraid to stray too far in case any sentries remained. Well, it doesn't look like they bothered. This Empress has something different in mind for all those changelings. Nothing good, you think? After a little more travel, they successfully reached the exit, and the bright sunlight was there to greet them in reward. They could all breathe a sigh of relief as they took in fresh air, some more so than others. <sighs> I thought we'd never see the sun again, Yuvenna stated. Next time we should build a normal city. I'm not giving up on the hive just yet, Cardus said, glancing back down towards the hive. Not after all the work we've put into it. We've got to get the queen back first, Facade noted. And that means getting back to the Alicorns. You're sticking with us then? Vladimir inquired. What? You think I'd run off once we reached the sunlight? It was possible. You're not part of Twilight's Hive. Facade shook his head. <laughs> Twilight Sparkle is... admirable. I mean, raised by ponies and then going on to defeat Crudelis and saving the world a couple of times to boot. But beyond that, I know the best way to help out with fixing all of this is going with you guys. The Thestral snorted. <laughs> right. Well then, Facade, welcome to our merry little gang. <laughs> <laughs>